The Oshun State Governor, Mr. Aruf, Raouf Aregbeshola, has called on the people of the state to support the police to effectively discharge their duties of safeguarding lives and property. Governor Aregbeshola said this in Oshubu, the state capital, when the new commissioner of police, Mr. Kola Shodipo, visited him. Governor Shola pledged his continuous support and cooperation to the command. The police are the extension of the civil society in guarding against anything that will disturb the peace of that society. And that's why they very, very correctly call themselves the friends of the people as the agency that is most visible in ensuring the safety of life and security of sale with property, we must see police as an extension of ourselves so as to ensure that we live peacefully, securely, without any threat at all. I want to do better than he has done, because in any place, I want to do better than your predecessor. And I promise that uh, I will do my best to make sure that the state is peaceful as it is. I believe so much in community policing. If UK, US, Canada can appreciate community policing, when they have all the gadgets, equipment, training, and they believe in the community, why not Nigeria? Why should have such equipment and they have and the training? So I promise you, sir, that I will do my best and make sure by the grace of God that we succeed. And this news just breaking in Channels Television. There is a confirmation of the DSS spokesperson having been retired compulsorily. That's the Department of State Security. The spokesperson, Marilyn Olga, has been retired compulsorily. Although she is not due for retirement, a source from the DSS says that her retirement follows alleged partnership partisanship in the build-up to the 2015 general elections. She was demoted last month from the rank of an assistant director of the DSS. Again, a confirmation that DSS spokesperson Marilyn Oga has been retired. Channel Television will, of course, keep you updated on that story. And staying in the southwestern part of the country, as news across Nigeria continues, residents and market men and women have continued to comply with directives from the governor of Ogun State, Senator Ibukun Amusu, that environmental sanitation exercises shall hold weekly across markets in the 20 local government areas of the state. Some of the markets located in Abeokuta, the state capital, recorded total compliance today. This development, many say, must be sustained and encouraged to ensure a good and habitable environment for business and living. The shops, they are not open and people are coming now for the environmental sanitation because even the, look, uh, the Abiyokuta government have given authority that every Thursday we should observe the environmental in the market so that we can have a better place. So we are observing it, we are doing it. The government should be able to provide a place that where we can come and put the dirty. And when it's full, in the morning, it's not like it will be littering everywhere. In the morning, they'll come and pack it, put it there, we'll put it again. So I think, but this, uh, this arrangement is very okay. I love it, but at least they should improve more. Reactions from the people of Ogun State on the uh, weekly environmental sanitation exercise to keep the environment clean and people friendly. And we'll take uh, some facts about Ogun State now, uh, if we have it in just a second. Uh, in the 36 states of the Federation, one of the major states in the country. We do beg your pardon, in the absence of that, we'll continue with the program, but stay 
with issues of maintenance and preservation. This time, the Federal Road Maintenance Agency, FEMA, has begun a nationwide maintenance exercise on the federal roads across the country during an inspection tour of Andaha, Akwanga, Joss Road. The managing director of FEMA, engineer Gabriel Amuchi, said the exercise is a step at making failed federal roads moderable again. Take a look. The quicker solution is continue to maintain what we have and we don't allow things to get to a very bad situation before we fix them. So if we empower FEMA to continue to do this work, before long they'll cover the entire country. We're looking at the PPP model, we're looking at uh, uh, World Bank, ADB and other multilateral institutions to support us. We're looking at very many ingenious ways of raising funds, including from the capital market. Rules that have outlived their design you know, lifespan, rules that are meant to last for 25 years now above 30, 30 years, 35 years. So it means generally they are weak. And what we are doing is within the limit of our valuable resources to ensure that we don't uh, watch them complete, completely get uh, disintegrated. So we're dealing with failures um, in response to the size and magnitude, not total reconstruction. So what you see here is uh, intervention uh, to make sure that the roads are motorable all year round. If you have enough funds to do comprehensive repair, it's a different ball game. That's full reconstruction. But we'll get there, uh, you know, with the support we're getting from federal government. We'll get to a level where roads that are very old will be given systematic recovery and the strengthening of their pavement. And now to how the weather is affecting certain parts of the country now. Large areas of farmland have been washed away by flooding in at least four local government areas in Kebi State following heavy rainfall. Sources close to the state government say the local government areas are Suru, Kamba, Agwe, Agungu local governments. There are no reports of casualties yet, and we hope that will remain the same. And residential areas were largely spared. Kebi is one of the states within the Nigerian Meteorological Agency's NIMETS forecast that will experience heavy rainfall and flooding. The National Emergency Management Agency is yet to comment on the issue, but the state government is said to be planning assistance for the affected farmers. There's nothing as painful as having your crops washed away by the force of Mother Nature. From there, following the recent crash of an Air Force plane, Donnie Air 228, the new Air Force officer, Commanding Nigerian Air Force Training Command, Kaduna, Air Vice Marshal Akili Ahmed has promised to focus more on exposing Air Force pilots to more safety training as part of efforts to end the frequent air crashes involving Air Force planes. He made the promise shortly after taking over his predecessor, Air Vice Marshal Al-Khali Mamu, who has been appointed Chief of the Administration at the Nigerian Air Force at the Training Command headquarters in Kaduna. He promises to ensure that the vision of the Chief of Air Staff to reposition the Nigerian Air Force through training and prudent management of resources and personnel is realized. The handover ceremony was heralded by an inspection of the Guard of Honor by the incoming Air Officer commanding the Nigerian Air Force Training Command. That done, the new boss at the command proceeded to the business of the day, the signing of the handover papers and the exchange of flags by the two officers. The occasion provided the outgoing AOC the opportunity to reel out some of his achievements in the training command. When I came in in April, it was almost immediately after the presidential election and we were settled with the responsibility of aid to civil power to conduct the governorship the election and the State House of Assembly election. We mobilized our men in support of civil authority within the entire AOR of training command, that is Katuna, Kano, Inugu, Jos, and Ipetu Jesha. And I'm glad to say that we contributed positively and we were able to witness a successful, hitch-free and orderly election. On his part, 
The new boss advised the men of the force to be more committed to carrying out their duties. We must also encourage mentorship at all levels as we strive to ensure optimal human capacity development through robust and result-oriented training for enhanced professional performance. He also promised that his tenure will focus on training of Air Force pilots to ensure safety in the air. In Air Force, there's always accident. You can only minimize it through safety trainings. And we will continue to train our personnel so that they will know the nitty gritties of all what they are doing. Aside from ensuring safety of the Nigerian airspace, these officers are also expected to come up with practicable ideas that will assist the Nigerian military in winning the war against terror and other security challenges confronting the nation.